Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with another model video. Today we're building, painting and customizing the Grail from Bandai, high grade 1144 scale from Iron Blooded Orphans. A earlier grunt suit used by a mercenary that's very similar to the Zaku one in the Universal Century. A fairly easy, flexible, high grade, low price, low parts count, five runners including polycaps, the usual full comprehensive instructions with a little color art backstory. Uh, these new ones has tips including use of tools and how to snap fit parts correctly for the best possible build. Well written in English and Japanese, making the hobby truly global and easy to access. The kit has mostly 80-90% colour separation with fairly detailed parts, some hollow components that are not visible. All in PS plastic, so keep those enamel products away, plus stickers. I'm not going to use them. With a sense of old fashioned scale modeling technique, glue and going back to form on this channel, I'm going to go ham and completely modify, customize and paint this kit, yet still keeping it out of the box enough to suit the universe of the anime. None of the steps are hard from using nippers to cut parts out using the two cut method, then expanding the peg holes for a loose fit and cementing them together adding liquid putty to fill any seams allowing 24 hours to dry and sanding afterwards with a range of grits from 200 to 1000 for polishing. Outside of the instructions there's a bit of for planning and thought work in what is cemented and what is snap fit keeping in mind for color separation and painting this as easy as possible. I'd like to have less parts so I'm not overburdened with a thousand tiny bits being lost on alligator clips. Bandai is an enormous monopolized empire in the hobby community and probably the largest model manufacturer in the world. They are a mixed bag with their products going for a saturation of the market with quantity over quality. I do love their engineering and the kits on the smaller scale. These are designed for Japanese and Southeast Asian uh, children, not uh, scale modelers in the first half, so there's always some aspects aspects that are a bit tricky to work around when we're adding paints and weathering products. Throwing in some old tooled re-release products, it's hard to tell what you're going to get when you pick up a box art, but this is a very recent manufactured piece from a couple of years ago and the tooling detail and snap fit is fantastic. I love this half open showing the internal inner frame substructure. It almost feels like it's working on a much larger expensive grade such as uh, master grade or whatnot. With a low parts count and flexibility in articulation and pulling parts apart for customization and the purchase of aftermarket parts which we'll get into, it blows my mind with the flexibility and the fact that this particular kit and other Grunt's Gundam frames from the Iron Blooded Orphan range is a blank canvas that you can do almost anything you want with. This build will definitely satisfy you if you're just going for the snap fit collecting phase or if you wish to go uh, completely mad. Weapons you start to get a bit fatigued and not want to build. The axe was disappointing and needed filling I suppose at this stage to keep the parts down. Bandai just gave up and left those uh, parts very shallow and hollow. The rifles and guns also have seams down them. None of this is particularly hard to fix. Quite easy actually. As we are going with the build I completely intend this to be a uh, weathered product and all the armor surfaces have also been sand buffed and polished to grab onto paint far easily plus when building up primer to various colors it's not going to reflect light or be as glossy. 
all pre-planning for my intended finish. The instructions are streamlined to focus on each limb component, build it, and in the final part you snap it all together. Uh, these polycapsin joints can also uh, take legs and arms from other high grade lines or the same series would be swapped around to be called customization. It also has a cool backpack that clips on. The instructions also can tell you what parts you can cannibalize from other kits. Though it's also a catalogue to what aftermarket small $10 sets you can buy with a series of weapons and parts for the entire line. Unblooded Orphans has quite a few of these sets. Hard to find now, but I'm glad I picked them all when on sale. Uh, these are items you should always buy immediately. Unlike the kit counterpart, they're far more simple, uh, virtually no polycaps and all PC plastic. They're more prone to breakage and uglier seam lines. With no thoughts of colour separation or even options for stickers. Now, this is where it gets quite a bit fun and we put in our creative minds in either getting Gundam markers or going crazy in painting. Now I didn't have the right parts for this particular build so I decided to modify weapons for a different kit and mount it on the shoulder and other parts of the body. As a bonus talking aftermarket, when the kit was released I got this very handy clear stand that was only released with initial airing of the anime, uh, free via Gundam Info and YouTube, plus first minting of the kits from the local distributor and hobby shops. A unique hallmark to show this build is original with the first line. Bandai is not a stranger nor beginner to aftermarket parts and in the injection molding side of things this goes as far back as the 1980s with the Zeta and original Gundam line. Every few series they will reintroduce them. With a lick of scratch building, glue based kit bashing, lots of seam lines, I'm throwing on automotive based lacquer filler primer to look for any faults or issues, sand back and refill. To complicate the process further, I really wanted to have a go at hairspray chipping with lacquers. The first coat on the individual colour parts was silver, allowed to fully mature and dry with a lacquer based hairspray sprayed into a cup and brushed on inconsistently. Allowing that to dry for a period of two to three hours, I loaded three airbrushes with three different tones of lacquer hobby paint, mostly Mr. Color, sometimes uh, Guy Note or Automotive, and shaded them one upon the other for a gradient light fall effect, allowing that to firm up from anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes per part, and running the scalpel along the edges very lightly not to remove the silver or primer and chipping little bits in the center and around for an interesting weathered and worn effect. Uh, this really slowed down the build time of this project and with the customization and other efforts just really dragged things out for me. We busted the coarse clear coat weathered pigment, did a Tamiya panel line accent wash and sludge wash to dirty up, a few different uh, colours for rush streaks and filth, dirtied up the feet with uh, another type of uh, pigment and the inner frame and weapons was just a slurry of different shades and coats of silver to gunmetal all on top of a metallic black base mixed from automotive paints again. I use uh, smoky colors and metallic blacks that often I have to mix about two to three hundred milliliters to just keep going and going. It did not disappoint. One of my favorite products to detail and hand paint with is the Mr. Hobby Metallics, especially uh, copper. I picked up some lovely detail in the inner frame. Each collection of color parts were kept in a Ziploc bag and painted in batches. The final amount of painting was allowed to sit for a week, the first happening about a month ago, to fully mature and harden before assembling to prevent any damage. Parts were adhered together using PVA 
glue not to cause any fogging, melting of paint or damage. There was minor cracking and part distortion or breakage from the use of enamel washers and pigments. This wasn't too difficult to repair but it did hamper a little articulation around the feet and knee joints. Other details include hand painting small details, uh, vents, pieces, bit of masking on the aftermarket components that were snap fitted on and liquid smoke to darken and dirty the ends of the weapons and thrusters. I am definitely very pleased in how this uh, turned out. My aftermarket decals off eBay were applied for the right insignia to the organization from the show and dirtied a bit on top of that with a final coat of matte clear to give an appropriate uh, finish sheen. The detail is immense and fun to paint but here's a very small guy. I needed the extra bulk of the backpack, the grenade launcher cannons on the shoulders for a very heavy armaments look and the manipulators and shields on the side for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Making this my own unique custom suit that can be inserted in the story in like a fan fiction-ish way somewhere. But hey, a lot of artillery heavy power for an older suit to fight against newer suits and maybe Maybe Gundam frames. This concludes the build. I hope you guys have thoroughly enjoyed it. All the references and information in the description section down below with social media. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time stay tuned for further content and catch you later.